Hello everybody, this is Stephen Allison, and this is my Manchester United Youth Academy review. Letting you know what's going on in the world of the Manchester United Academy every single week. It's meant to be on Thursdays, a bit busy yesterday, so it's coming out today. So it was only a day late, it's not bad. Uh, now, we've signed a shitload of scouts. And I mean, by a shitload of scouts, I mean an absolute army of scouts. Now, I assumed Manchester United had like a worldwide smattering of scouts that was keeping aware and keeping on top of what's going on in the world of, you know middle teenage footballers so we can attract and recruit the best the very best the cream of the crop from around the world now that's obviously in place in parts we don't pick up the likes of Fosu Mensa from Holland if that's not the case do we we've we've clearly got some scouts in place but not according to Nicky but we haven't got the coverage that he desires and he said if there's a player that comes up in Buenos Aires we need to know about him if there's a player that comes up in Gorton we need to know about him if it comes up in somewhere in America we need to know about him and Nicky Butt has gone on and he is implementing that now the the appointment of Marcel Boot or Bout or Bow or I'm not sure how you're supposed to pronounce it is a strange one because he was a part of Lou Van Gaal's staff um he's sort of I don't know if he left or if he's just been kept around but he has now been officially appointed as Manchester United's chief worldwide scout that's interesting Bout or Boot or let's just call him Marcel shall we um, he was with um, Lou Van Gaal at Bayern, he was with him at Ajax, he was with him at AZ Altmar, uh, and he's got a pretty decent track record in bringing through young players, so that's an interesting one. Uh, it looks like we've appointed some opposition scouts as well, but I'm, I'm just going to read the list that we've got here of some of the names that we've appointed, where they've come from, what they've been doing. So we've got Thomas Bowman from Hoffenheim, he's going to be the Switzerland scout. We've got George Alvialv from Chelsea, not sure where he's going to be. We've got Roy Buchenkamp, I mean, honestly, these names couldn't be any harder for me, could they? Um, from PSV, he's going to be covering Holland. Uh, we've got Sandro Orlandelli from Brazilian FA. He's going to be covering Brazil for obvious reasons. Joel Ferreira from Sporting, and he's also at Orlando. He's going to be covering Portugal. So it looks like we've got a big main guy covering each little country, and I'm sure he'll have you know, a dozen or so scouts underneath him also going looking at all the games. Uh, Armand Benneker from Hoffenheim, he's covering Austria. Tommy Muller-Nielsen is covering uh, Denmark, and then we've got uh, Prisantz, uh, Mark Prisantz from the Philadelphia Union, he's going to be covering America for us, so in total 50 new members of staff have been recruited, mainly for the scouting department, that's a massive step forward, and as every single week we're building up this picture, aren't we, of what Nicky Butt is doing going to work, now some people have lost the job, some people have been reassigned, but Nicky Butt is absolutely going to town on this academy to make it the best in the world. And what's also interesting is that he's he's not shy in giving interviews, is he? He gave an interview the other day where he said there's a lot more in the bank in terms of players that we are ready to bring through. And I think he's talking about the likes of Gomez, the likes of Roshan, the likes of Tyrrell Warren, the likes of Chong. All these players that are on the cusp of potentially doing something really special. Nicky Butt is confident. He knows what he's got in his locker. But personally, I, I'm, I'm a bit underwhelmed with what's going on with the under-23s. But it does seem that they're investing... And maybe they've just written off most of this under-23s. If we get one or two players that come into the squad on the back of it, happy days. But maybe they're just looking at the 18s and below. Maybe they're looking at the, the restructuring of the club. And at some point, maybe it, it was a priority thing. And they said, you know what, 23s, we'll just have to put it to the side for a couple of years while we focus on the building because there is some serious amount of building that is going on at the moment. Now, the under-23s haven't played in the past week. The last game was that 2-0 defeat away to Everton at Southport. Long time off of the lads. It's going to be about three weeks before they play their next game, which is Liverpool at home on Tuesday, the 18th of October. The 18s went to Borough last weekend, uh, and they decided against going. It was going to be like an eight-hour round trip for us, uh, and I missed a peach of a goal. Uh, United have retweeted it on their main account if you want to go and check it out. DJ Buffonge absolutely buries one, and he's got goals in him. Um, I really like the look of him this season. Um... Not sure entirely where I see him playing as he progresses in his career, but at the moment, him and Cal Whelan are forming a real nice partnership as a central midfield pairing, and I really like it. He's looking good as a number eight. He's got the footwork, he's got the strength, he's got the agility. He's quite short, but he's strong with it. He's, he's powerfully built. He's got the footwork, and he's also, as you'll see if you go and check this goal out, he's also got the eye for a goal, and you need that eye for a goal. You need that ability to be able to score goals from midfield. A team that's got goals in it up front, obviously, is deadly, but a team that's got goals in it from midfield is going to be one that's going to be hard to beat. And uh, another good result for us, we go to, uh, we have Sunderland tomorrow at lunchtime. So we've got Sunderland tomorrow. 
Uh, Gomez is going to be back with a squad, uh, and like I'll come on to him in a second. Um, in the under 16s at Middlesbrough last week, uh, Dion McGee, um, a name that you've probably not heard of so far, Dion McGee scores an absolute peach of a goal. Um, first touch, got his back to goal, lifts it over the defender, turns around, it's on the half volley, and lobs the keeper on the half volley. It's a beautiful goal, a beautiful goal. Whether he meant that first touch or not, I don't know. He reckons he did. Um, but it's a, it's a cracking goal. Dion's a good little player, quite small, but with the, the same temperament that a lot of the lads coming through the academy at the moment have, is where they're just an absolute grafter. He's got some skills in his locker. He's got the ability to go past the man, usually playing on the wide right for the under-16s at the moment. So keep an eye on him, and we'll see how he develops. Um, they also was in a tournament last night where they lost on penalties to Derby in the final. I've uh, not seen any of the games of that. They've got no game this weekend, so it's going to be another week before I get some eyes on with what's going on in the under-16s. But let's bring it back to Angel Gomez, who's getting his own segment almost, isn't it? Every single week on this, but it's all 100% deserved. Now, Angel was away at the weekend, didn't play at Middlesbrough because he's on international duty, um, <laughs> where he got himself two goals, four assists in three games and uh, brought home the trophy as the captain of the England under-17 side, beating Germany 8-1 in the final which is unbelievable isn't it now i believe croatia was the favorites for this going into this tournament it was in croatia from what i've read croatia was the favorites going into this tournament england dispatched them in the first game five nil get out of it um i've seen the goals i've not seen um an extended highlights i've only seen the goals the goals are what you would expect the assists and the goals are what you expect from angel inside the box neat finishes and the assists are just it's usually it's as always one touch just keeping the play going What's encouraging is that they're, they're giving him the captain's armband. This isn't the first tournament he's won with this England side. This is a special England side as well, this age group. But it's not the first one that they've won. And it's not the first one that they've won with Angel as the captain. Now, as someone that appears to me, at least, watching from the sidelines, as very quiet, it's encouraging that he keeps being given the captain's armband, especially in the international scene. So it's not just United fans or United that are pinning some hopes on him. It looks like the international scene is as well so a, a fantastic win the whole age group absolutely blew everybody away no one come close to him run out absolutely deserved winners so well done to angel and all the england side that's a that's a cracking um performance and it's a cracking bit of a confidence booster for all of them let's hope he can carry it into the sunderland game tomorrow uh, and that pretty much wraps up a very quick youth review for this week as i said no games for the 23s didn't manage to get over to Millsborough, so what else can I give you? Um, apart from the scouts that we've just got. So, next fixture for the 18s is the Sunderland game tomorrow at Carrington. If you're going down, give us a shout. I am going to be down there. And then the 23s, I've got Liverpool at home a week on Tuesday, and then following Monday, both at home. Liverpool followed by Arsenal. Two tough fixtures, so get yourself down there. That's probably going to be at least Sports Village for both of those. Thank you for watching. Give it a nice fat thumbs up, and I'll be back next Thursday, hopefully with some footage. Uh, and maybe something else from Carrington tomorrow. So thank you for watching. Uh, please hit that subscribe button. We're going for 30k by Christmas. Uh, it slowed down a little bit, so I need a big bump from everybody. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in a bit.